Hey guys, welcome to episode 21 of the Meta Meltdown. We are officially of age. Uh, today is October 27, 2016. The Meta Meltdown is a weekly 20 minute podcast about the current meta in Hearthstone. Each week we'll focus on a specific deck. This week we're finally doing Control Warrior. And we're going to provide our insights on how to pilot the deck on the Hearthstone ladder. My name is Dominic Silver Dragon Nguyen, and I have my co-host with me, Nate Diggity. How's it going? You rat bastard. You stole my pun about being 21. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 21. That's crazy. Nice. Dude, it's been like, yeah, it's been a while. Great minds think alike. Yes, yes. 21. I just looked, looked it up and yeah, that's what it was. Mm. No yep. worries. Officially of age, ready to talk some Control Warrior and about some of the hints dropping about the next expansion. Yep, I'm excited because we finally need something that changes up our our meta. Yes, finally get rid of the damn shaman. This meta has been melted down too many times. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> no worries. Okay, so let's go into our personal Hearthstone news. Uh, this week in Hearthstone, uh, Nate, what did you do? Uh, I played a lot of Nazoth Rogue and Mally Rogue, still on that grind. I think I'm in the 60s now. There you go. So, um, yeah, also, like, retired from WoW after two months of grinding that game. Realized I played it too much, too much of that booger sugar. It's okay. So I needed to uh, quit that addiction. And also played a lot of Control Warrior because that's what we're talking about this week. How about yourself? Uh, so this week uh, in Hearthstone... I did the Tespa tournament thing, and uh, unfortunately we got like three would uh, which mm. is terrible. We like they drew so godlike it was not even funny. Like we went back and reviewed the vods, and we we're like, "There's nothing we could have done." Like they just, they, yeah, it was really bad. <laughs> um, but so that we tried, we were learning like Miracle Rogue and learning um, uh, Hunter to counter a lot of the, the typical classes that we've been seeing. But I don't know, it just it was really bad. So, stop with that. I played Control Warrior, which is really fun. I played Pirate Warrior, which is like really, really fun. And then I got the uh, the the new priest quest, like play fifty priest cards or whatever. And then I got the death battle quest. So I was like, okay, time to wipe out two of these quests in one go. Let's do death battle Nazoth priest, and it's like so garbage. Dude. Took twice as long. Dude, yeah, it oh, is. I should have just thrown all the priest cards in and then just like played priest cards on curve and not even cared and just gotten the quest done with. But yeah, whatever. I tried it. Priest sucks. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, uh, the the test tournament that you were in. Um, for people who don't know about it, basically you get like three people and then you play another like university. So it's it's pretty cool that the, I think that uh, Hearthstone and Blizzard are putting together tournaments like that. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to play uh, UW Stout by chance? No, I did not. I saw UW played each other on the VODs. Well, uh, there's UW Washington I, I saw a bunch, uh, and then there's yeah. University of Wisconsin Stout, which is my alma mater. Oh, uh, so I, I don't think I know. No, 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 uh, because we play people in our respective region. So ah, they gotcha. have to be like in the east, uh, on the West Coast for me to play. So, them. in conference, essentially. Yeah, but maybe at the end, if I make it out to the finals, <laughs> and so do they, then maybe we'll fight. But I'm two and two right now with a go, with a go record of four and two at least in order to, to get anywhere. So we'll see. Hmm. And the win and the first place gets seven thousand dollars in scholarship money. So that's nice, uh, nice package. Yeah, not bad. That'll pay for a couple textbooks. Yeah, yeah, like two. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. And then we get like a commemorative like Hearthstone Tespa shirt. If, like just for participating, so maybe I'll wear that out on the show one day. Oh, it's so worth it, right? Yeah, there. you'll get to see. It. Yeah, exactly. You can play Hearthstone with a bunch of buddies and just get a free shirt. It's sick. All right, cool. So I heard we have some gadgets on hints for the latter. They released uh, what looks like some uh, like a news article, which didn't give them any hints, but a lot of people started speculating on things. Nate, you've got the uh, latest and greatest. Sure, um, we'll go with that. So yeah, they, they I believe they originally started with a postcard that just said Gadget Stand, which is mm -hmm. pretty much the official announcement. This is the next expansion. Yep. Um, and then they came out with the like a newspaper clipping, and then I think it was like an article after that. So basically, there's not a lot in there. If you looked at the newspaper clipping, um, I noticed in one section it said like jewelry, coins, max. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what the hell any of that means, other than max is pretty obvious, and maybe. Nice. 
Uh, yeah, dude, like Hearthstone, or excuse me, WoW lore, uh, Gadgetstan is this, like, goblin city where they're all, like, merchants. So we might be seeing something with additional coins. Um, hopefully there's no more goddamn goblins after the uh, GBG that we had. Yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll bring back, like, a new Doctor Boom. Who knows what kind of shenanigans they're up to. But uh, it sounds cool. Anything new will be awesome at this point. I cannot wait until most of the good shaman cards get cycled out. So that will be fun because we'll talk about how well we talk about how broken it is every week. I guess we're just beating a dead <laughs> horse, but it's it's getting even better. It's, it's just the worst part. So yeah, Gadgetzen though uh, reminds me of Gadgetzen auctioneer and more coins and max means maybe we're making rogue great again. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> that would really suck, considering I've been grinding like half ass rogue. Oh yeah, dude. <laughs> then everyone's gonna play it, and you're like, all right, well, well then yeah, we'll do a rogue. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's that's a speculation on that, and then not really ladder news, but uh, BlizzCon preliminary started. Mm -hmm. So like the top sixteen players have been playing. They played all pretty much yesterday and today. Our boy Hopmouth, who's been on the show before, yeah. uh, beat Pavel from Russia in round one. So he is on um, to the next round. I guess Sick. it's it's not it's not single elimination. So Pavel's yeah. still in it too, but he had obviously Hopmouth. Yeah, can't talk. Hot Meowth obviously has a better chance. Hard name to say. Um, yeah, so catch that. I believe it's on like tomorrow and Saturday, possibly Sunday, and then the third and the fourth for sure during BlizzCon. So. Yeah. A lot of hearts on the watch, so catch that if you're interested. Then for the preliminaries, do you know if, if the people who voted for Hot Meowth get the card packs or you get them all at the end, or do you know how that's working at all? Yeah, I believe it's at the end. Yeah. I don't think they gave an official date other than the uh, trademark Blizzard soon. Mm, yes. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, no worries. Sounds good. Can't wait. I want to start watching those games and start learning more about uh, tournament stuff as opposed to just doing ladder stuff. But, yeah. Do you want to run us through the Temple Story meta report really quick and then move on to the Data Reaper report, which just came out today? Yes, sir. So Tempo Storm meta report number 14, mm -hmm. third week in a row. They're supposed to release... Uh, three weeks, the... right? Or every three weeks. Yeah, I mean, they usually give a date and it's said the 24th through the 27th. Today is the 27th and they have about th three and a half hours left in order to release it without being liars. But just to recap, from three weeks ago, Midrange Shaman at number one, that's still very true, so maybe that's why they're not trying too hard. Uh, tier two is Malagos Druid, Control Warrior, Freeze Mage, and Token Druid. A little bit outdated, so we'll just skip it, and then we'll go into Vicious Syndicate right away. Uh, Vicious Syndicate, uh, like a well-oiled machine, released theirs again for the 24th week in a row every Thursday. Uh, number 24... I believe it is. And then Tier 1, Midrange Shaman. It is at a 54.83% win rate. That is up by 0.12% from last week. And then also in Tier 1 is Face Hunter uh, with 52.21% win rate. It didn't go up at all because Face Hunter really wasn't in their meta report last week. It's sort of new. Um, and then in Tier 2, we have Secret Hunter, 50.83% win rate, uh, down almost half a percent. Zulok at 50.83% as well, down 0.9%. And then Beast Druid at 50.26%, uh, down almost a full percent. Um, and then also Control Warrior in Tier 3 is at a 47.43% win rate, which is what we're covering this week. Down about a half percent from last week. I feel like I'm a stock person or something. <laughs> so many damn numbers. Um, so, yeah. What I noticed uh, right away is that almost all of the decks minus Miracle Rogue. Yeah, all the decks minus Miracle Rogue and Face Hunter, which wasn't applicable, uh, went down in uh, win percentage, except for Midrange Shaman, which actually went up uh, 0.12. So, ended up. I believe it went up in um, percentage played as well by about 3%. So, fun! It's now a quarter of all games. Yeah. Oh, okay, end rent. <laughs> Go. Yeah, I don't particularly enjoy it either. I also don't like the fact that Hunter's so high up there. Like, I don't like Hunter at all. I have a Secret Hunter. Secret Hunter's not too bad. But even that's losing now. So, I mean, I guess people are just getting better at playing mid-range Shaman and then not being able to... Uh, find an effective, like, real counter to it, so kind of yeah. sucks. I mean, the thing is, is that it's good against pretty much 
everything. Mm -hmm. Like, there's nothing that hard countered it except for Freeze Mage, which is like it's like 60 40, I believe, is the win rate in favor of Freeze Mage. Uh, and you and then, it, yeah. if you play any sort of Control Warrior, Freeze Mage just gets blown out. So it's not even it's not even fun to play Freeze Mage on the ladder. So because yeah. you lose to all the other decks, you know, you're not even guaranteed to win against um, the Shaman. So it's like not a good time for anyone. Yeah. It's rough, but hopefully, <laughs> at BlizzCon last year, when they were talking about um, the League of Explorers, they released it like the following week, I believe. They so, released it like right away, or very, very soon, yeah. Like, it was, I believe it was in the week, because they're like, yeah. it's not coming next month, it's not coming in a couple weeks, it's coming next week. No, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember so, that. For hopefully, sure. cross your fingers. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. And then we'll get to play the Heroic Brawl, which, you know, they said was going to be released... Um, before BlizzCon, but uh, Ben Brode tweeted out earlier that that might not be the case. So, unfortunately, we don't have anything to really say this over for a while. So, kind of, uh, yeah. BlizzCon, please. Please save us, BlizzCon. At least we'll have some, like like we talked about earlier, some good hearts on the watch. So. Yeah, true, true, true. Very, very true. All right, sounds good. Let's talk about Warriors now. All about Warriors. It's funny because <laughs> we used to complain about Warrior Stone, and now we're like, man, these damn shamans. Um, before that, it was Paladin Stone, <laughs> Secret Paladin. And there's always a, a broke deck, but at least previously there was ways to counter it. I mean, yeah, exactly. This, this is, I think, this is probably the most stale and the most. Whatever. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> All right, run me through the Warriors, please, neat. Um, so Warrior counts for about twelve point six six percent of all games played on the ladder. Uh, Control Warrior specifically accounts for 4.64% of all games, and like we discussed earlier, the win rate is 47.43%. Mm -hmm. All right. How about the deck list? All right, so this is Yosti's Yogg Control Warrior. I don't necessarily like Yogg. I don't know why Nate picked this deck list, because he hates Yogg, but I mean, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> it's probably still good at board clearing. Well, to interrupt you, uh, please. Uh, Rosti was number one on NA and EU simultaneously uh -huh. for quite some time uh, with this exact list. So that's pretty much why we picked it, and some other good control lists have come out recently, like Purple just had a fatigue list, but yeah, yeah. Um, this is tried and true, like, top-tier deck, so. Mm. Sounds good. So for those of you guys who are doubting Yogg, like myself, tweet at, Yost tweet at Rosti. All right, let me get to the deck list real quick. I've got one, Blood to Icker. Uh, two Shield Slams, two Executes, two Fiery War Axes, uh, two Revenge, two Slams, one Acolyte of Pain, two Bash, two Ravaging Ghouls, two Shield Blocks, one Elise Starseeker, two Brawls, one Harrison Jones, two Iron Forge Portal, one Jessica Trueheart, one Savannah Windrunner, one Baron Geddon, one Gorhal, one Gromish Hellscream, and one Yogg-Saron Hope's End. Yeah. Sweet. You want to go over the overview? Yeah, sure. Let me go to the overview. Real quick, though. Um, well, actually, we'll talk about it in just a second. But basically, like, um, <clears throat> the entire point of a control warrior, if you've never been around and haven't played Hearthstone for, like, the longest time, is you just remove everything. It's, like, the easiest, like, you know exactly what you're going to do every turn. You're just going to remove everything. Just get rid of it all. You just got to throw it all away. <laughs> you got to kill it all. Like, whatever you could do, for the most part, for the most part, right? Like, you like you still have to worry about value. You're not going to throw, you know, your go howl into their 1-1. One, one. But, I mean, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe you will. It depends. But, for the most part, you just get rid of everything. You go to the end, and then you play Elise Star Seeker, and you win the game. <laughs> and you armor up. You armor up every turn, if you can. If it's safe, you armor it up. And you draw Jessica Shuhart, and you armor up, and then... And then your opponent realizes that they can't burst through like 90, 90, 90 HP, and then you win the game. It's great. Oh, don't forget to emote him every time you are. Oh, him. yeah, there you go. Please. You got to emote him, yeah. And you and you rope, too, if you're a life coach. There you go. Because you got to think about everything, right? There's, there's so many things you have to consider um, as a control warrior. So that's your, uh, that's your review. Uh, TLDR, keep the board clear as long as possible. Armor up as much as possible until your opponent has no win condition and they've lost all hope. It's it's super grindy, like yeah. Whatever. Yep. Moving on. Uh, Matchups: good, bad, and ugly. So good, about fifty-five percent win rate. We have Face Hunter, Freeze Mage, Zulok, and Pirate Warrior. <clears throat> yep. Uh, all pretty quick decks, or Freeze Mage, which just cannot blow through, you know, ninety HP, like Dom said. Yeah. 
Uh, bad matchups, 35 to 45% win rate. We have Beast and Cthune Druid, Aggro, Anyfin, and Control Paladin, Control Priest, Reno Lock, and Cthune Warrior. And then ugly matchups, there's actually a lot more than usual. So below 35% win rate. Secret Hunter, uh, I guess it just blows through um, with Cloaked Huntress, just blow out a bunch of secrets and just gain such tempo advantage. And Hunter just dominates uh, Warrior in the first place. So uh, Mid-Rage Hunter, obviously, Savannah Hyman is probably the one single card you can attribute um, that ugly win percentage to. And then Dragon Paladin, I didn't know anyone played Dragon Paladin in the first place, so I'm not sure how they logged that many games to even come up with a percentage. But... Yeah, Dragon Paladin beats Control Warrior. So. Cool. Sounds good. Let's move into uh, cards that stand <coughs> out. Any yes. specifically to you, Dan? Um, I I really, really like uh, Elise Starseeker. Um, like that's your that's like the fun card you get to play. Uh, you play it on turn four and it's a really good body. Draws you a monkey, which is great, and a map, which is great. Um, and then like it really gives you that second, you know, or um that uh that extra win condition that, that sometimes you really do need in order to win the game. So that's really good. I really like Jessica Trueheart. Like, um, that that card is really, really necessary for this deck to function. Uh, in, a, in a control versus control warrior matchup, the first person who draws Jessica card typically just wins the game because you have more armor at the end of the game. Um, and, yeah, what about you, Nate? Um, yeah, typically I like the cards that are different in... Like aren't really staple cards for decks that we talk about. So I chose like Iron Forge Portal. Um, it's pretty new from the last uh, set. So yeah, basically you gain, them, yeah. gain four armor and gain, gain a four mana random minion. So that's always fun. Baron Geddon, that's I guess kind of a staple in Control Warrior. At least a long time ago. Hasn't really been seen lately. But it's really good against Shaman. Getting rid of those totems. Uh, Blood the Acre I found interesting. Because it's in a Control deck. Mm-hmm. Um... I still don't know exactly why. Maybe it's just a good ping for I one. Guess it, I guess it pings Grom. Yeah, I mean, Grom for yeah. sure, but um, everything else, I'm not really sure of why. But anyway. Yeah. Yeah, those are the cards that I found pretty interesting. Um, any tech cards? Did you actually use Yogg, or did you replace anything? Um, I, I used Yogg just because I still have it. I think it's too late for me to return it now, but whatever. Um, cool dust, yeah. And then um, I, uh, a bunch of my friends kept telling me, saying, like, oh, put Prince Malkazar in. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the deck really inconsistent. Um, it's, like, fun. Like, you get to draw, like, Mad Pagels and shit randomly. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, sometimes you can really get legendaries, like, whatever. But um, I think that uh, the only time you ever really want to have Prince Malkazar is in a Control Warrior versus Control Warrior matchup. Because um, you you need the extra cards so you don't fatigue as much and um, you can bait up more brawls that way. But I mean, typically on ladder, like you don't really need it. Like you're gonna you're gonna win anyways. Like there's no real point. Like you want to draw stuff like revenge, which oh my god, it's so good if you can get if if you let people take you down to twelve, and then and then you just revenge them, and they've lost their entire board and they've and they've played everything because they 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 think like you're dumb. You know, like oh my god, like. No, no, serious. Like it happened to me. Like I was, I was facing off this one guy, and um, like previous weeks, where I didn't know he was playing controller because he didn't play very much cards. I was like, okay, I'm just gonna hit him in the face over and over again. Like this, 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 this game's over, right? And then he revenged me, and I was like, wait, shit, I don't have anything else left in my tank. I'm screwed. And then he just played like Iron Forge Portal, started armoring up. I couldn't burst through <laughs> his armor, and like that was it. I knew I was over. Like, yep. So, uh, revenge is really, really good too. So, yeah. Yeah, fun uh, little tip about revenge, I guess, is if your opponent is sort of smart and they leave you at like 13 or 14 or whatever, so you can't get the extra two damage from your revenge, because typically it does one for two mana, or if you're below 12 health, 12 health or below, uh, it'll deal uh, three AoE damage to everything on the board. Uh, so anyway, if you have a weapon up, you can attack something, and then you can you know try and get the 12 or below in, in order to trigger your revenge, or you can bash your face. So if you bash, oh. it'll deal three damage first, and then, and then it'll give you the armor. Oh, so that's pretty smart. Um, I've done that a couple times in order, you know, to do it. So um, yeah, just look for creative ways to get yourself down to twelve or below if really necessary. Wow! Oh, I never, I never really thought about that. Thanks, what I'm here for, Dan. Oh my god, that's really cool. All right, sick, sick. 
Okay, do you want to go into the mulligan? I'll start with the aggro, if that's all right. Uh, beforehand, mm. uh, you want to talk about some tech choice cards oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. for those of us who hate Yogg and dusted him for 1600 <laughs> Um, I really like Ragnaros. I think Ragnaros is a huge staple in control decks. Um, he's so good. I wish you had the Light Lord, but you don't. So you play the Fire Lord, and you just <laughs> no serious. <seriously. Like>, yeah. <laughs> and uh, you hit if you hit for eight, and it's really really good. It forces someone to deal with it. And oh my god, if you can keep Ragnaros on the field for more than two turns, Jesus Christ, you just, you just win that game. It's really really good. What about you, Nate? Um, yeah. So I tried two different ones. I tried Deathwing. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't really. Low. I mean, it's good. Uh, but it obviously discards your hand, so usually you want to save it for like the last cards, and you're not in a ton of uh, fatigue versus fatigue matchup, so it wasn't as good as uh, Saw Got the Slither, which I found super valuable. Um, some of the matchups that I was seeing a lot that I was struggling with was Rogue, and Rogue just cannot clear Saw Got save their life because wow. they have all spells typically. Um, also against any Finn Paladin, which is one of the um, bad matchups for you as well. So, yeah, it's it's pretty good, so I would try that if you don't have Yogg or don't want to use him. Sounds good, and if you guys don't know who Slogoth the Slitherer is, it's a 9-mana 5-9 taunt, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. It's like Fairy Dragon's big brother <laughs> with taunt. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, so. Yeah. Cause, I mean, people don't typically see that, but, I mean, yeah, I think it's a really good texture. It's very, very valuable as well, so. All right, uh, yeah, as you said, moving into uh, starting hand, uh, did you want aggro control? Uh, I'll do aggro. All right, so for aggro, you want the fiery win axe as much as possible. Um, Shell Slam is still really, really good. Um, slams, like Nate said, typically in an aggro matchup, you hit the minion instead of your face. Um, bash is also... Oh, wait, no, that's not, I said bash. Bash, you bash the other minions <laughs> instead of bashing your face. And then Ravaging Ghoul is really, really good, too. And then if you know that they're a hunter... Um, you kind of want revenge as well, because they're going to take you down really quick, and you really, really need that uh, revenge to, to wipe the board. So, yeah, any any early game is really, really, really strong, and, and you want to be removing stuff as much as possible. That's your entire um, overview. That's your job. What about Keep controlling? the damn board clear. <laughs> you have one Especially job. Especially against Shaman. <laughs> oh my god, if Shaman builds a board, you're done. You're so done. Uh, yeah, against control, so Fiery Winax, of course, probably the top five card in the game uh shield slam i found to be really effective just for moving um bigger minions harrison jones you can hold on to if it's a you know against another weapon class um just card true heart like the staple card of a warrior so definitely hang on to that if you know you're against like another warrior or something uh executes pretty good as well if you think like maybe you're playing druid and they're going to innovate out something real quick you can just execute it if you have some way to deal damage to it other than that, just basically assess the matchup, you know, see what you might need. Um, yeah, maybe hang on the Ravaging Ghoul if you think uh, Druid's going to throw out some 1-1 uh, roots or tokens right away. So just play it by ear. Yeah, and I would say the very last thing um, you might want to consider is you might want to sub in the Ooze, uh, Swamp Ooze, right, for weapons. Because you're seeing a lot of Shaman, a lot of Shamans have those uh, nifty-ass weapons. You want to swap, uh, swap that in. I actually was playing... Uh, it, playing rogue earlier i think it only dropped an ooze on me i was so sad i was like what the heck like, no one <laughs> plays, supposed to do that no one, plays ooze, no one plays ooze anymore what the fuck <laughs> what's going on <laughs> like, tricky i know so um definitely someone who's innovated on the ladder made me lose that game so yeah throw in a news you'll surprise a lot of opponents because no one plays ooze, no one plays ooze anymore um but yeah any any final thoughts on this deck Eight. uh Go give it a whirl. Just try to be uh. <laughs> not whirlwind. God damn it. We don't even have that in this deck anymore. I know. Anyway, um, give it a try. And yeah, just try to be greedy with the deck. You know, you can take a lot of face damage, so you can yeah. always armor back up. So just, again, play it by ear, you know, see, you know, what your opponent has and, you know, if they have a potential, you know, to put you down in a couple turns and maybe don't be so greedy. But, you know, if you're at good health, just see what your opponent does and, you know, react accordingly. You're basically a reacting deck. So see what your opponent does and then just remove it. Sounds good. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for everyone who's watching, downloading our podcast. And uh, shout out to our moderator, Ritual Plays, for always being here, even though he's not. Um, and 
You can find this deck list and any of our previous shows at metameltdown.com. Uh, you can find us at twitch.tv slash metameltdown every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Uh, except for this week, my apologies. And you can find us on Twitter at the Meta Meltdown. Uh, you can find us on YouTube at Meta Meltdown, and our email is Meta Meltdown Podcast at gmail.com. Next week, we're going to do Miracle Rogue, apparently. That's yeah? Happening. You down? You down to do yeah. Miracle Rogue? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can get uh, Golden Rogue by then. Ooh. All right, It'll be right. an ass load of games, but we'll, we'll try it. <laughs> okay, okay, sounds good. I've got a good Medical Rogue deck list I want to share with you. So, um, Yeah, we'll do the Medical Rogue next week see how well it does. I know. Okay, the only thing about Medical Rogue, though, is that it's garbage, apparently, against uh, Shamans. Like, it's good against almost everything else. Well, we'll get into most of this next week, but mm-hmm. I find that Rogue, it has the potential to beat any class, you know, how they have their opening hand. Mm-hmm. Especially if you have like, if you get the coin and you have like a Van Cleef that you can just toss out right away, like a ten ten on like turn three it's or true. four. Yeah, you know, you're gonna have crazy swing turns, which gives you the potential to beat any deck. So that's that's why I've really been enjoying playing it lately. Okay, very cool. All right, let's talk more about it next week. Um, thank you everyone who's been listening. We'll be back next Thursday. And here's the intro, <laughs> uh, outro. <laughs> See, this is why I put it. <laughs> this is why I do it before. Because now we have to sit through this. <laughs> Alright, Nate. I'll see you next week, buddy. Later, Dom.